Avant ça, je faisais de l'université, je faisais de la technique à la salle. Là, fait que, ah, comment ça marche? Je suis ouais. capable de rouler vos piles à la fin aussi. Correctement. <rire> je l'apprends à mes enfants aujourd'hui puis je suis vraiment très... Vous faites du camping, vous aussi? Oh, euh... presque! Euh...
Kwe. 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 Bonjour. Hello. Hello. La célébration eucharistique va bientôt commencer. The mass will soon begin. S'il vous plaît, nous vous demandons de... Please, we would ask you not to take pictures during the celebration. Nous vous souhaitons un excellent... We wish you... ...moment de prière. ...an excellent moment of prayer, united... ...la foi... ...in brotherhood, in faith, and in the love of God. Je vous invite... Un instant de I would ask you to take a moment of silence si vous voulez bien. while you await the beginning of the Mass. Please take your seats un moment de recueillement. and sit in silence Merci. awaiting the celebration of the Mass. Thank you.
Au nom du Père et du Fils. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of mercy and reconciliation, who offer your people special days of salvation so that they may recognize you as creator and father of all, mercifully come to our help. We pray throughout this acceptable time so that, receiving gladly from you the message of peace, we may serve your will to restore all things in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Reading from the book of Genesis. After the man and the woman had sinned, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man said, I heard that sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. The Lord God then said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, 
The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for his wife and clothed them. The word of the Lord.
Le Seigneur soit avec vous. The Lord be with you. Évangile de Jésus-Christ selon Saint Luc. The Gospel of the Lord according to Saint Luc. Le même jour, c'est-à-dire le premier jour, on the first day of the week, deux disciples faisaient two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about two hours away from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all of the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Mais avec tout cela, yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. À vrai dire, Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. Quand, lors, they were at the tomb early this morning, elles pas trouvé, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of them who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. Acclamons la parole de Dieu. The Gospel of the Lord. The journey of the disciples to Emmaus at the conclusion of Luke's Gospel is an icon of our own personal journey and that of the Church. On the path of life and faith, as we seek to achieve the dreams, plans, hopes, and expectations deep in our hearts, we also come up against our own frailties and weaknesses. We experience setbacks and disappointments, and often we can remain imprisoned by a paralyzing sense of failure. 
Pero el Evangelio Yet the Gospel tells us that at those very moments we are not alone. El Señor sale a nuestro encuentro. For the Lord comes to meet us and stands at our side. He accompanies us on our way with the discretion of a gentle fellow traveler who wants to open our eyes and make our hearts once more burn within us. Whenever our failures lead to an encounter with the Lord, life and hope are reborn, and we are able to be reconciled with ourselves with our brothers and sisters, and with God. À nos fragilités et à nos faiblesses. Nous expérimentons défaites et délusions, et parfois nous restons prisonniers du sentiment d'échec qui nous paralyse. L'Évangile nous annonce que précisément à ce moment-là, nous ne sommes pas seuls. Le Seigneur vient à notre rencontre, se joint à nous, marche sur la même route que nous avec la discrétion d'un voyageur aimable qui veut rouvrir nos yeux et embraser de nouveau notre cœur. Et quand l'échec laisse place à la rencontre avec le Seigneur, la vie renaît à l'espérance et nous pouvons nous réconcilier avec nous-mêmes, avec nos frères, avec Dieu. So let us follow the itinerary of this journey. We can call it a journey from failure to hope. First, there is a sense of failure haunting the hearts of the two disciples after the death of Jesus. They had enthusiastically pursued a dream and pinned all their hopes and desires on Jesus. Now, after his scandalous death on the cross, they were leaving Jerusalem and going back to their former life. They were on a return trip, as a way perhaps of leaving behind the experience that had so dismayed them and the memory of the Messiah executed on the cross like a common criminal. They were making their way home despondently, looking sad. Their cherished expectations had come to naught. The hopes they had put their trust in had been dashed. The dreams they dreamed had given way to disappointment and sorrow. Suivons donc l'itinéraire de ce chemin que nous pourrions appeler de l'échec à l'espérance. Avant tout, il y a le sentiment de l'échec qui habite le cœur de ces deux disciples après la mort de Jésus. Ils avaient poursuivi un rêve avec enthousiasme. En Jésus, ils avaient mis toutes leurs espérances et tous leurs désirs. Maintenant, après la mort scandaleuse sur la croix, ils tournent le dos à Jérusalem pour entrer chez eux, à la vie d'avant. Leur voyage est un voyage de retour, comme pour vouloir oublier cette expérience qui a rempli d'amertume leur cœur. Ce Messie mis à mort, Comme un, comme un malfaiteur sur la croix. Ils rentrent chez eux, abattus, tout tristes. Les attentes qu'ils avaient cultivées sont tombées dans le néant. Les espérances en, la, en lesquelles ils avaient cru ont été brisées. Les rêves qu'ils auraient voulu réaliser laissent place à la déception et à l'amertume. That experience also marks our own lives and our spiritual journey at those times when we are forced to recalibrate expectations 
and to cope with our failings and the ambiguities and confusions of life. When our high ideals come up against life's disappointments and we abandon our goals due to our weaknesses and inadequacies, when we embark on great projects but then find that we cannot carry them out, when, sooner or later, all of us in our daily lives and relationships experience a setback, a mistake, a failure, or fall, and see what we had believed in or committed ourselves to come to naught. When we feel crushed by our sins and by feelings of remorse. C'est une expérience qui concerne aussi notre vie et notre cheminement spirituel. En toutes ces occasions où nous sommes contraints de redimensionner nos attentes et de faire face aux ambiguïtés de la réalité, aux ténèbres de la vie, à nos faiblesses. Cela nous arrive chaque fois que nos idéaux se heurtent aux, délisu- aux désillusions de la vie et que nos intentions sont ignorées à cause de nos fragilités. Lorsque nous cultivons des projets de bien, mais que nous n'avons pas la capacité de les mettre en œuvre. Lorsque dans les activités que nous menons ou dans nos relations, tôt ou tard, nous faisons l'expérience d'une défaite, d'une erreur, d'un échec, ou d'une chute, tandis que nous voyons s'effondrer ce en quoi nous avions cru ou nous étions engagés, tandis que nous nous sentons écrasés par notre péché et notre culpabilité. This was the case with Adam and Eve in the first reading. Their sin alienated them from God, but also from each other. Now they can only accuse each other. And we see it in the disciples from Emmaus, whose distress at seeing Jesus' plan come to naught led only to a dispirited conversation. We can also see it in the life of the Church, the community of the Lord's disciples, as represented by those two from Emmaus. Even though we are the community of the risen Lord, we can find ourselves confused and disappointed before the scandal of evil and the violence that led to Calvary. At those times, we can do little more than cling to our sense of failure and ask, what happened? Why did it happen? How could it happen? Cela arrive à Adam et dans la première lecture. Leur péché non seulement les a éloignés de Dieu, mais les a éloignés l'un de l'autre. Ils ne peuvent que s'accuser mutuellement. Et nous le voyons aussi chez les disciples d'Emmaüs, dont le malaise d'avoir vu s'écrouler le projet de Jésus ne laisse place qu'à une discussion stérile. Et cela peut également se produire dans la vie de l'Église, la communauté des disciples du Seigneur, que les deux disciples d'Emmaüs représentent. Bien qu'étant la communauté du ressuscité, elle peut se trouver perdue et déçue devant le scandale du mal et la violence du calvaire. Elle ne peut alors rien faire d'autre que serrer dans ses mains le sentiment de l'échec et se demander « qu'est-ce qui s'est passé? »« Pourquoi cela est-il arrivé? » Comment cela a-t-il pu arriver? Brothers and sisters, these are our own questions. And they are the burning questions that this pilgrim church in Canada is asking. With heartfelt sorrow on its difficult and demanding journey of healing and reconciliation, in confronting the scandal of evil and the body of Christ wounded in the flesh of our indigenous brothers and sisters, we too have experienced deep dismay. We too feel the burden of failure. Allow me then to join in spirit 
the many pilgrims who in this place ascend the holy staircase that evokes Jesus' ascent to Pilate's praetorium. Allow me to accompany you as a church in pondering these questions that arise from hearts filled with pain. Why did all this happen? How could this happen in the community of those who followed Jesus? Frères et sœurs, ce sont les questions que chacun nous se pose à lui-même. Et ce sont aussi les interrogations brûlantes que cette Église pèlerine du, au Canada fait résonner dans son cœur sur un éprouvant chemin de guérison et de réconciliation que nous réalisons. Nous aussi, face au scandale du mal et au corps du Christ blessé dans la chair de nos frères autochtones, nous sommes plongés dans l'amertume et nous ressentons le poids de l'échec, de la chute. Permettez-moi alors de m'unir spirituellement aux nombreux pèlerins qui parcourent ici la Scala Santa, qui évoquent cette montée de Jésus au prétoire de Pilate, et de vous accompagner en tant qu'Église dans ces interrogations qui naissent du cœur chargé de douleur. Pourquoi tout cela est-il arrivé? Comment cela a-t-il pu se produire dans la communauté de ceux qui suivent Jésus? At such times, however, we must be attentive to the temptation to flee, which we see in the two disciples of the Gospel. The temptation to go back, to abandon the place where it all happened, to try to block it all out and seek a refuge like Emmaus, where we do not have to think about it anymore. When confronted with failure in life, nothing could be worse than fleeing in order to avoid it. It is a temptation that comes from the enemy, who threatens our spiritual journey and that of the Church. For he wants us to think that all our failures are now irreversible. He wants to paralyze us with grief and remorse, to convince us that nothing else can be done that it is hopeless to try to find a way to start over. Ici, cependant, nous devons être attentifs à la tentation de la fuite présente chez les deux disciples de l'Évangile. Faire marche arrière, s'enfuir du lieu où les faits se sont produits, tenter de les enlever, chercher un endroit tranquille comme Emmaüs pour ne plus y penser. Il n'y a rien de pire face aux échecs de la vie que de fuir pour ne pas les affronter. C'est une tentation de l'ennemi qui menace notre cheminement spirituel et la marche de l'Église. Il veut nous faire croire que cet échec est désormais définitif. Il veut nous paralyser dans l'amertume et dans la tristesse, nous convaincre qu'il n'y a plus rien à faire et que ça ne vaut donc pas la peine de trouver une voie pour recommencer. The Gospel shows us, however, that it is in precisely such situations of disappointment and grief, when we are appalled by the violence of evil and shame for our sins, when the living waters of our lives are dried up by sin and failure, when we are stripped of everything and seem to have nothing left, that the Lord comes to meet us and walks at our side. On the way to Emmaus, Jesus gently drew near and accompanied the disconsolate footsteps of those sad disciples. And what does he do? He does not offer generic words of encouragement, simplistic and facile words of consolation, but instead, by revealing the mystery of his death and resurrection foretold in the scriptures, he sheds new light on their lives and the events they experienced. In this way, he opens their eyes to see everything anew. We who share in the Eucharist in this basilica 
can also take a new look at many of the events of our own history. In this very place, three earlier churches stood. There were always people who refused to flee in the face of difficulties, who continued to dream, despite their own errors and those of others. They did not allow themselves to be overwhelmed by the devastating fire of a century ago, and with courage and creativity built this church. And those who share in our Eucharist on the nearby Plains of Abraham can also think of the fortitude shown by those who refuse to let themselves be held hostage by hatred, war, destruction, and pain, but set about building anew a city and a country. L'Évangile nous révèle au contraire que précisément dans les situations de délusion et de douleur, précisément lorsque nous expérimentons avec stupéfaction la violence du mal et la honte de la faute, lorsque le fleuve de notre vie se dessèche à cause du péché et dans l'échec, quand dépouillé de tout, il nous semble que nous n'avons plus rien. Précisément là, le Seigneur vient à notre rencontre et marche avec nous. Sur le chemin d'Emmaüs, il se joint avec discrétion pour accompagner et partager les pas résignés de ses disciples tristes. Et que fait-il? Il n'offre pas des paroles d'encouragement générique, des expressions de circonstances, des consolations faciles, mais en dévoilant dans les Saintes Écritures le mystère de sa mort et de sa résurrection, il éclaire leur histoire et les événements qu'ils ont vécus. Ainsi, il ouvre leurs yeux à un nouveau regard sur les choses. Nous aussi, qui partageons l'Eucharistie dans cette basilique, nous pouvons relire de nombreux événements de l'Histoire. Sur ce même lieu, il y avait auparavant trois temples. Il y avait ceux qui n'ont pas fui devant les difficultés, qui ont rêvé de nouveau malgré leurs erreurs et celles des autres. Ils ne se sont pas laissés vaincre par le terrible incendie de ce sanctuaire et, avec courage et créativité, ils ont reconstruit ce temple. Et ceux qui partagent l'Eucharistie depuis les plaines d'Abraham peuvent aussi sentir l'âme de ceux qui ne se sont pas laissés prendre en otage par la haine de la guerre, par la destruction et par la douleur, mais qui ont su à nouveau projeter une ville et un pays. Finalement, Finally, in the presence of the disciples of Emmaus, Jesus broke bread, opened their eyes, and once more revealed himself as the God of love who lays down his life for his friends. In this way, he helped them to resume their journey with joy, to start over, to pass from failure to hope. Brothers and sisters, the Lord also wants to do the same with each one of us and with his church. How can our eyes be opened? How can our hearts burn within us once more for the gospel? What are we to do as we endure spiritual and material trials, as we seek the path to a more just and fraternal society? As we strive to recover from our disappointments and weariness, as we hope to be healed of past wounds and to be reconciled with God and with one another. Enfin, devant les disciples d'Emmaüs, Jésus rompt le pain, rouvrant leurs yeux et se montrant encore une fois comme le Dieu de l'amour qui donne sa vie pour ses amis. De cette manière, Il les aide à reprendre le chemin avec joie, à recommencer, à passer de l'échec à l'espérance. Frères et sœurs, le Seigneur veut faire de même avec chacun de nous et avec son Église. Comment nos yeux peuvent-ils être ouverts? Comment notre cœur peut-il encore s'embraser pour l'Évangile? Que faire 
lorsque nous sommes affligés par diverses épreuves spirituelles et matérielles, lorsque nous cherchons la voie vers une société plus juste et fraternelle, lorsque nous désirons nous remettre de nos déceptions et nos fatigues, lorsque nous espérons guérir des blessures du passé et nous réconcilier avec Dieu et entre nous. Solo hay un camino. There is but one path, a sole way. It is the way of Jesus, the way that is Jesus. Let us believe that Jesus draws near to us on our journey. Let us go out to meet him. Let us allow his word to interpret the history we are making as individuals and as a community and show us the way to healing and reconciliation. In faith, let us break together the Eucharistic bread so that around the table we can see ourselves once again as beloved children of the Father, called to be brothers and sisters all. Breaking the bread, Jesus confirmed the message brought by women, a testimony that the disciples had already heard but were unable to believe that he was risen. In this basilica, where we commemorate the mother of the Virgin Mary, with its crypt dedicated to the Immaculate Conception, how can we not think of the role that God wished to give women in his plan of salvation? Saint Anne, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the women of Easter morning show us a new path to reconciliation. The tender maternal love of so many women can accompany us, as Church, towards new and fruitful times, leaving behind so much barrenness and death, and putting the crucified and risen Jesus back at the center. Il n'y a qu'une seule route, un seul chemin. C'est le chemin de Jésus. C'est le chemin qu'est Jésus. Croyons que Jésus se joint à notre marche et laissons-nous rencontrer par lui. Laissons sa parole interpréter l'histoire que nous vivons comme individus et comme communauté et nous indiquer la voie pour guérir et pour nous réconcilier. Rompons ensemble avec foi le pain eucharistique afin que, autour de cette table, nous puissions nous redécouvrir, enfants bien-aimés du Père, appelés à être tous frères. Jésus, en rompant le pain, confirme ce que les disciples ont déjà reçu comme témoignage des femmes et à qui ils n'ont pas voulu croire qu'il est ressuscité. Dans cette basilique, où nous, rappelons, où nous nous rappelons de la mère de la Vierge Marie et où se trouve également la crypte dédiée à l'Immaculée Conception, nous ne pouvons que souligner le rôle que Dieu a voulu donner à la femme dans son plan de salut. Sainte Anne, la très sainte Vierge Marie, les femmes du matin de Pâques, nous indique une nouvelle voie de réconciliation. La tendresse maternelle de nombreuses femmes peut nous accompagner comme Église vers des temps à nouveau féconds où nous laisserons derrière nous tant de stérilité et nous remettrons au centre Jésus, le crucifié ressuscité. Truly, we must not put ourselves at the center of our questions, our inner struggles, or of the pastoral life of the Church. Instead, we must put Him, the Lord Jesus. Let us make His Word central to everything we do, for it sheds light on all that happens and restores our vision. It enables us to see the operative presence of God's love and the potential for good, even in apparently hopeless situations. 
Pongamos igual. Let us put at the center the bread of the Eucharist, which Jesus today once again breaks for us, so that he can share his life with us, embrace our weakness, sustain our weary steps, and heal our hearts. Reconciled with God, with others, and with ourselves, may we ourselves become instruments of reconciliation and peace within our societies. En effet, au centre de nos questions, des peines que nous portons en nous, de la vie pastorale elle-même, nous ne pouvons pas nous centrer sur nous-mêmes et nos échecs. Nous devons nous centrer sur lui, le Seigneur Jésus. Au cœur de toute chose, mettons sa parole qui éclaire les événements et nous rend la vue pour déceler la présence agissante de l'amour de Dieu et la possibilité du bien, même dans les situations apparemment perdues. Mettons le pain de l'Eucharistie que Jésus rend aujourd'hui encore pour nous, pour partager sa vie avec la nôtre, embrasser nos faiblesses, soutenir nos pas fatigués et nous donner la guérison du cœur. Et réconcilier avec Dieu, avec les autres et avec nous-mêmes, nous pouvons nous aussi devenir des instruments de réconciliation et de paix dans la société dans laquelle nous vivons. Seigneur Jésus, Lord Jesus, our way, our strength and consolation. Like the disciples of Emmaus, we plead with you. Stay with us because it is almost evening. Stay with us, Lord Jesus, when hope fades and the night of disappointment falls. Stay with us, for with you our journey presses on. And from the blind alleys of mistrust, the amazement of joy is reborn. Stay with us, Lord, because with you the night of pain turns into the radiant dawn of life. Let us say, in all simplicity, stay with us, Lord, for if you walk at our side, failure gives way to the hope of new life. Amen. Seigneur Jésus, notre, fo notre chemin, notre force, et notre consolation, nous nous adressons à toi comme les disciples d'Emmaüs. Reste avec nous, car le soir approche. Reste avec nous, Seigneur, car l'espérance se couche et que la nuit de la déception décline. Reste avec nous, parce qu'avec toi, Jésus, le cours des événements change et l'émerveillement de la joie renaît de l'impasse du découragement. Reste avec nous, Seigneur, car avec toi, la nuit de la douleur se change en un matin radieux de la vie. Nous disons simplement, reste avec nous, Seigneur, parce que si tu marches à nos côtés, l'échec s'ouvre à l'espérance d'une vie nouvelle. Amen.
God is always listening to the needs of the women and men of our time. In this special moment of prayer and praise to the Lord, let us present these intentions to him with Jesus, who accompanies us on the roads of life. After each intention, we will respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis, may his ministry bring to the world the comfort of the good news inaugurated by the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. message <laughs> Amen. Amen. For the indigenous peoples and for our nation, that words and actions of reconciliation pave the way for a future full of hope. We pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, for the increase of initiatives of dialogue between parties in conflict, and an end to all acts of violence and death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our assembly, gathered at the table of the Eucharist, that communion with the Word and the One Bread may make us artisans of peace and love in the places where we live and work. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, you sent your Son into the world to show your goodness and mercy to all human beings on, her, on earth. Hear our prayer and answer it through Christ our Lord.
Yeah.
Frères et sœurs, prions ensemble. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Rappelle-toi, Seigneur. Remember, O oh Lord, your Son is our peace and our reconciliation. By his blood, he removed the sin of the world. Welcome with goodness the gifts of your church. Happy to be celebrating this time of grace, give us the power to bring to all the freedom of Christ. He who rules forever. Le Seigneur soit avec vous. God be with you. Élevons notre cœur. Rendons grâce au Seigneur notre Dieu. Cela est juste et bon. Vraiment, il est juste et bon. It is truly good to give you praise and to sing your praises, Almighty God, for the work that you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ in the heart of our humanity, which is still divided and experiencing disunion, change hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Your spirit moves the hearts of men so that adversaries can come together and so that peoples can seek to come together. Yes, it is your work, Lord, when love trumps hate, when love and pardon come through in friendship. That is why, with the celestial choir that sings your praises, we also praise you and proclaim on earth your glory without end. Puissant, nous te bénissons par Jésus Christ, ton Fils. As you, by Jesus, your Son, who came to our world in your name, he is the sa salvation, the hand you reach out to sinners, the way that brings us peace. Our sins had turned us away from you, God. And you brought us to reconciliation. So turned to you, we could love one another through your Son, who you gave unto death for us. And now that we celebrate reconciliation obtained by Christ, we pray. Sanctify these offerings by pouring out your Spirit that they become the body and blood of your Son who told us to celebrate this mystery. During the supper, he who was going to give his life for our liberation, he took the bread in his hands and he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat of it. This is my body given up for you.
de même ce soir-là, in a similar fashion, that night, he took the cup, proclaiming your mercy, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and drink of it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the holy and eternal offering, which will be given for you and for the multitude in forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with me, your unworthy servant, and all the bishops and your entire people, with the Holy Father and the Bishop of Quebec, Gerald. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Par lui, avec lui et en lui À toi, Dieu le Père Tout-Puissant, dans l'unité du Saint-Esprit, tout honneur et toute gloire pour les siècles des siècles. We can say with confidence at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Délivre-nous de tout mal. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Soutenu par that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Seigneur Jésus-Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Voici l'agneau de Dieu. Voici celui qui enlève Here is the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray to the Lord. May the sacrament of your Son, which we have received, Lord, increase our strength, that from this mystery of unity we may drink deeply of love's power and everywhere promote your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Saint Père, Holy Father, cher Pape François, dear Pope Francis, merci d'être avec nous. Thank you for having come to us, to be with us, to walk with us. Jésus nous a fait une puissance. Jésus gave us a powerful lesson when he walked alongside the two disappointed disciples on the way to Emmaus. He understood their despair and walked with them. He listened to them and he illuminated their faith and even revealed his presence by a gesture that leads them forward. Jesus becomes for them invisible to them and lets the Holy Spirit accompany them to the truth. The Lord appeased their disappointment and healed their wounds. He changed the meaning of their existence and changed the course of their lives by leading them toward those who seek a message of hope in order to live in the dignity that is represented by being children of God. You are here in Quebec, Holy Father. You are here in the sanctuary of Saint Anne de Beaupré. You are walking the same path that three and a half centuries ago our pastor Saint Francis of Laval walked, Saint Francois of Quebec. His mission was followed by myriad missionary disciples who came from all over and who burned with the same sacred fire to tell the gospel in this land of America with extraordinary realizations or achievements. There were still many obstacles that sullied the message of the gospel. Scandals erupted, divisions took place, and faith was watered down. A powerful call to healing and reconciliation is arising from lives that have been wounded. And you have heard the echo of that plea. You heard the recriminations and you recognized how serious they were. And like the master of Emmaus, you walked along the road to walk with us on the path of healing and reconciliation. Ensemble, Together, we are undertaking a path of opening to our distinct realities in, as we recognize humbly our failures, but above all, we seek to find the remedies that can not only tear out evil at its root, but also to bring justice to our communities that are thirsting for justice, unity, and peace so that they may heal fully. So many owe you their deepest recognition and gratitude, those who are here today and those who have accompanied you along in your pilgrimage here on Canadian land. But of course, our brothers and sisters from the First Nations Inuit and Métis here. Your deep and sincere attention helps to heal deep wounds 
and gives us the necessary strength to continue in the process of reconciliation that is so helpful for peace. Holy Father, we know that the expected results of this pilgrimage cannot happen overnight. They require incredible resilience and sincere gestures of welcome and empathy. Through your presence here with us, you show us that every effort of reconciliation requires an important part of renunciation, humility, understanding, and opening to the lives and the culture of others. Thank you for having walked with us on the path to healing and reconciliation. Thank you for praying for us as we assure you that we will accompany you as best as we can on the path of your demanding mission. Thank you, dear Pope Francis, for your words and your gestures. They encourage us and they call to us. We would also like to tell you like the disciples of Emmaus said to Jesus, stay with us. But we know that your presence as a pastor is awaited elsewhere where other brothers and sisters need comfort and need to have their faith confirmed. Travel well, Holy Father. And please count on our humble prayers. This people loves you and needs your leadership and your witnessing of the faith. May Jesus look over you as well as Jesus' mother Mary and her grandmother, Saint Anne. May they watch over you. Our English-speaking brothers and sisters also tell you from the depths of their hearts. Thank you, Holy Father. The Wendat tell you Tiawenk. The Inu say Tainushka Butin. The Inuit say Nakurmik. The Cree say Miigwech. The Atikamek say Mitwete. And I say, on behalf of the large family that we make up with all of my heart and all of my gratitude, thank you. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.
Il y a exactement 20 ans, exactly 20 years ago, today, on the 28th of July 2002, Pope John Paul II was here for the Mass of the Daily Youth Day in Canada and Toronto. Nous vous proposons, en terminant notre célébration At the end of today's celebration with Pope Francis, we propose that we sing the theme from 20 years ago, Light of the World. Celui que de nos yeux nous avons vu. Celui que de nos mains nous avons pu toucher, celui que nos oreilles ont entendu, celui que dans nos cœurs nous avons rencontré, voilà celui que nous vous annonçons et qui a resplendi sur la terre où nous vivons. Au plus fort de la nuit, ce monde à bout d'espoir bascule de sommeil qui surprendra ses rêves endormis pour lui montrer l'aurore annonçant le soleil qui restera debout comme un gardien qui sera parmi nous. d'amour, de sens et d'absolu, si nous allions un peu les écouter. Et puis, tout en marchant, leur apprendre Jésus, leurs yeux déçus pourraient s'illuminer. Après le pain que nous avons
Well, my own. 